With thousands of minions, five movies, and one new sequel on its way, we've got over 100 Easter eggs from all the Despicable Me movies to talk about. Let's get cracking on those Easter eggs. Okay, come on. Starting with the most recent Despicable Me movie, let's check out the Easter eggs in Minions Rise of Gru. Gru must be an Avengers fan because he makes a definite Avengers Endgame reference. Gru says, Minions assemble! Did anyone else spot the mystery machine in the background? A van that looks a lot like the famous one from Scooby-Doo makes an appearance. In this scene, Gru is seen sporting an outfit that looks like Russell's outfit in Up. Gru and the Minions pay homage to the world's favorite candy man. The end credits show Gru and the Minions trick-or-treating in Halloween costumes. Gru is dressed as Willy Wonka and the Minions are his Oompa Loompas. It looks like Gru made the delicious decision to trade his freeze ray for a cheese ray. In Despicable Me, Gru uses a freeze ray, but it seems that back when he was young, his weapon was a bit more kid-friendly. The name's Gru. Felonious Gru. The opening credits looked a whole lot like those classic 007 opening credit sequences. The Vicious Six got their name from Marvel. If you are wondering where the supervillain squad got that title, it references an even more famous team of bad guys, Marvel's Sinister Six. There's a subtle shout-out when OG Stewart is turned into a chicken. It may be a reference to Pollo Loco in the OG movie. Did anyone spot Stewart's Playboy-inspired fashion? In an albeit unexpected reference, Stewart is wearing Hugh Hefner's infamous robe for bed. What child would want spiders on their wallpaper? A child whose goal is being a bad guy, of course. And while you were taking a close look at Gru's wall, you may have noticed a Stronghold poster. Stronghold is a member of the Vicious Six, Based on this reference, maybe the Minions are Miley Cyrus fans. A Minion swings into the Illumination title screen on a disco ball the same way Miley Cyrus does on her famous Wrecking Ball. The Minions wear these outfits referring to the Bride's famous yellow suit in Kill Bill Volume 1, which also call back to Bruce Lee's jumpsuits, the famous actor and martial arts master. According to the filmmakers, Jackie Chan was one of the biggest influences on the Minions' fight sequences. jean Claw's outfit is a reference to a Clockwork Orange. In another very 70s movie reference, did anyone spot that Jaws poster? Yes, there's a poster of the world's most famous shark hanging on the wall in the movie theater. Speaking of Jean-Claude's name, this character's namesake is actually his voice actor. His name is a pun based on the name of Jean-Claude Van Damme, the famous martial artist and actor who voices Jean-Claude. One Vicious Six member's outfit is a rollerball reference. Fittingly for Rise of Gru's major 1970s undertones, Rollerball is a 1975 science fiction movie about, of course, Rollerball. There's a vision of the future in this prequel and it comes in the form of Silas Ramsbottom. He was introduced in Despicable Me 2 and a younger version of him appears in Rise of Gru. It's clear that members of the Despicable Me universe can get a Mad Magazine subscription. If you pay close attention, you can spot a villain in the Vicious Six waiting room reading Mad Magazine. Since Rise of Gru, pink toilet paper has officially become a Despicable Me staple. There's pink toilet paper in the airplane bathroom just like in Despicable Me 3. Pink toilet paper is only found in France, so this is likely a reference to French culture. Otto must be an aspiring stunt performer because he's following in Evil Knievel's footsteps. Or should we say, motorcycle tracks. Did Master Chow's voice remind you of anything? Yes, Michelle Yeoh voices Master Chow. And this is a pretty self-referential casting choice, since tough Master Chow would be good at playing a lot of Yo's action movie characters. When Gru tries his best to insult Wild Knuckles, the villain is less than impressed. And he calls Gru no Don Rickles. Don Rickles was a comedian who was particularly good at funny insults, and during the time of Rise of Gru, this funny guy would have been at peak fame. Going back in time, next up is the first Minions movie to be added to the Despicable Me franchise, which was aptly named Minions. These guys were actually modeled to look a lot like Gru's daughters. From glasses to height differences, it's pretty easy to tell Margot, Agnes, and Edith's Minion counterparts. Did you spot the Richard Nixon joke in NYC? It's a joke that's definitely designed for the grown-ups watching. Was that the big comfy couch that the Minions passed when flipping through channels? In a subtle reference only a true 90s kid could love, the Minions come across the 90s favorite kids show when channel surfing. And speaking of 90s TV favorites, we also catch a glimpse of Dragon Tales. The Minions watch a Woody Woodpecker short that's called Three Little Woodpeckers. And yes, if you're wondering, this is owned by Universal. If you thought the Minion language was gibberish, it's time to think again. The Minion's native tongue is way more complicated than that. It's actually composed of many different languages. Dr. Nefario may not be as big a part of the Minions movie as he is in other Despicable Me movies, but he still makes an appearance. You can spot the doc in the background at VillainCon. 
VillainCon is more inspired by Comic-Con than you may initially think. VillainCon's logo references San Diego Comic-Con's logo. The moon was a vital part of the OG Despicable Me, and in Minions, the reference is specifically to the moon landing. When the Minions end up on a moon set, there is a reference to the conspiracy theory that the moon landing in 1969 was, in fact, all a lie. Mozart fans may have noticed this reference to the famous opera The Magic Flute. Did you know that the fire hydrants are all a reference to this? You can also hear Kevin whistling Der Vogelfanger bin ich Schach, which is a song from the opera. Even Papagena, the name Stewart gives one of the hydrants, is named after one of the opera's characters. When Bob becomes king, that's definitely a reference to the sword in the stone, and the sword looks a lot like the kind in the 1963 Disney version. Gru's mom makes a little cameo in this movie as well. The minions destroy a painting of Marlena Gru herself. The reference to the Beatles' Abbey Road isn't exactly subtle. Stuart, Bob, and Kevin pop up from underground just as the Beatles walk across the crosswalk, like in that famous image. There are also a few of the Fab Four's songs to be heard. Got to Get You Into My Life plays as a credits role, and Revolution is performed by the Minions during the after credits scene. Since Minions takes place in the famous English city, it makes its fair share of jokes at Londoner's expense. Among these jokes is plenty of references to British folk's stereotypical love of tea. As if the Minions director didn't have enough work on his hands making this movie, did you know that he also voiced every single Minion? Yes, director Pierre Coffin is the man behind the Minions. He was the voice of all 899 of them. The design of the evil Minions was based on a Looney Tunes episode where Tweety Bird drinks a potion and turns into a big scary Tweety Bird. Both Tweety Bird and the Minions are little, yellow, and not actually evil at all. Moving on to Despicable Me 3, this third Despicable Me installment actually has the most easter eggs of any of them. Let's start with the major Sing reference. When the minions enter the Sing competition, it's just like the other Illumination animated movie. Speaking of references to other animated favorites, Nemo and Marlin from Pixar's Finding Nemo seem to be underwater in this submarine scene. If you love Easter eggs, Margot's t-shirt collection is usually a good place to look. She wears a Grinch t-shirt that references the legendary Dr. Seuss Christmas character. Gru and Drew's appearances are a sneaky reference for comic book fans. The brotherly duo is based on Spy vs. Spy characters. Like Gru and Drew, Spy vs. Spy is about two super spies who wear coordinating black and white outfits. Star Wars lovers, did you catch the nod to The Empire Strikes Back? Dr. Nefario gets frozen in carbonite, and we all remember when that happened in the Star Wars universe. Another adventure movie that gets a shout out in this film? Raiders of the Lost Ark. They steal what looks to be the same statue that Indiana Jones once stole. Balthazar Brad is a major 80s fan, and he doesn't have to talk about his love of the decade past for us to figure that out. His name is Brat, a nod to the group of young movie stars from the 1980s, the Brat Pack. And speaking of all those 80s references, there are quite a few others to be found, from moonwalking like Michael Jackson to loving Madonna and Phil Collins. Despicable Me 3 doesn't just go back to the 80s, it also goes back to the future. Gru's car reminds any film aficionado of the famous DeLorean from Back to the Future. When the Minions are in prison, there's a Jailhouse Rock reference. Stuart must be a major rock lover. He plays Van Halen music because Stuart really rocks. The stuffed unicorn appears in two Despicable Me films. The one from the first movie also appears in the third. The famous minion Mel has a very special namesake. He's named after Chris Melodondri, the CEO of Illumination. If the name Fredonia sounded familiar to you, you may be a Marx Brothers fan. The city name is a reference to one of the wacky comedian's most famous films, Duck Soup. It looks like Lucy is a lover of Easter eggs just like we are. She actually points out that the ceiling looks just like the Sistine Chapel, but with some unexpected pig cameos. Did you notice a headstone referencing Butch Cassidy in Drew's Lair? One headstone reads Grutch Cassidy, which sounds a lot like a portmanteau of Gru and famous bank robber Butch Cassidy. This layer is filled with odes to other famous villains, including Hannibal Lecter. There's a statue that looks a lot like Gru sporting a Hannibal Lecter mask. That's not the end of nightmare fodder to be found in Drew's lair. There's also an evil clown that looks like Gru playing Pennywise in another remake of It. The filmmakers have said that Gru and Drew are yin and yang. There's a kind of yin-yang symbol on Gru's despicamobile, and Gru and Drew are often dressed in black and white, just like the symbol. 
Despicable Me's Gru and Drew are some of Steve Carell's most beloved roles, so it's really no wonder that this movie references one of Carell's other most famous roles, Michael Scott in The Office. There are a few moments in this movie that remind us of the Pink Panther. Balthazar's Diamond is definitely a Pink Panther reference, and we think the credit sequence also reminds us of the classic mystery franchise. We all remember the OG Despicable Me fart gun, and this super silly weapon is used in the third installment during the Illumination credit in the beginning of the movie. Despicable Me has a delicious dessert called Brad and Gary Ice Cream. This is certainly a pun on the famous ice cream company Ben & Jerry's. But where did the new name come from? That would be Illumination's short film Brad and Gary. When the Minions perform, there's a subtle callback to the animated favorite The Secret Life of Pets. The Minions sure can dance, and their choreography is just like the hot dogs dance in the other Illumination flick. When Bratz Robot is wreaking havoc on Hollywood, there's a billboard advertising a movie called Onions that's coming soon. Onions is not the best name for a movie, but it does sound a lot like Minions. So this was probably a teaser to the next Despicable Me movie. It's no surprise that there are more sneaky billboards to be spotted in this scene. Another billboard is for something called Fast Car Driver 12. Any idea what that might be? It's a nod to the famous Fast and Furious franchise. Another billboard references Jurassic World. The Gigantosaurus Rex billboard is definitely poking fun at the plot of Jurassic World. In the beginning of the movie, a submarine turns into a bike like in The Dark Knight. A ship called Poseidon isn't likely to trick anyone. In that beginning scene, you can spot a boat with Poseidon written on the side, which is definitely a reference to the Poseidon movies. If all the nods to Universal Pictures movies weren't enough, there's a more on-the-nose Universal Pictures reference. The Minions actually break into Universal Studios' set. It's amazing that one donut can be so recognizable. Agnes has a donut in her backpack, and it's not just any old donut. It's a reference to The Simpsons donut. In case it wasn't clear enough that Balthazar Bratt was an 80s fan through and through, just check out what's under his bed. There's a VHS tape hiding under his bed, and it's the 1986 sci-fi hit Aliens. There's also a VHS tape of a real 50s sci-fi movie called It Conquered the World. During the pig police chase, two children are reenacting Romeo and Juliet in the background. The I Heart Gru hat now says I Heart Drew. The brothers actually share a similar story to the twins in The Parent Trap. And like in that movie, both sets of twins are played by the same actor. Did you see those skulls on Gru's boxers? This choice of underwear is a nod to the Punisher. Did the idea of a car that can dig into the ground remind you of another animated favorite? It's just like the one in The Incredibles. What's more Hollywood than Marilyn Monroe? Well, there's a woman holding her skirt on the Hollywood Walk of Fame just the way Marilyn Monroe famously did. Balthazar is a major Guardians of the Galaxy reference. He carries a Walkman with 80s music and loves dance battles. Remind you of anyone? Star-Lord, of course. Speaking of space, there's another reference to the original movie when Gru wanted to steal the moon. As Gru wonders whether he should be good or evil, the view of the moon and his spacesuit in the corner reference when Gru used to be the bad guy. Brat dresses up in a costume that looks a lot like Donald Trump. You can't deny that that's his signature hairdo. Yes, when the minions are in prison, they snap their fingers and dance like the Sharks vs. Jets famously do in West Side Story. Moving on to the first ever Despicable Me sequel, Despicable Me 2, it looks like the world of Despicable Me has the same banana suppliers as we do. The bananas all have Chiquita Bananas labels on them. Did you know that when this movie came out, you could actually call Lucy? For a period of time after the movie came out, you could actually call the number and hear Kristen Wiig herself giving Lucy's voicemail message. This beach photo appears in the first movie as Gru's phone wallpaper. That same photo is hanging up where Dr. Nefario works. With these non-English jokes, Spanish speakers are sure to have the last laugh. You might have caught this poster that, translated to English, reads, If you are drinking to forget, pay first. Did you notice any difference between the yellow guy's smiles in the first movie and the second? Their teeth were not exactly straight in the OG Despicable Me, but by the time the sequel rolled around, they had perfect pearly whites. Margot has another interesting t-shirt choice, but this time it's not a cartoon. Her t-shirt references Bayside Shakedown. This TV series is a police dramedy from the late 90s. El Macho's storyline references Dr. Strangelove. The villain El Macho's wacky death where he straps himself to a bomb before riding a shark may have reminded you of a storyline in Dr. Strangelove. Edith says that Gru looks like Gollum from Lord of the Rings. 
Now let's unpack all the hidden jokes in the original Despicable Me starting with the Wilhelm scream. As one of the most famous sound effects ever, the Wilhelm scream is a scream that can be heard in many movies and TV series from the 50s through today. In Despicable Me, Gru's mom accidentally kicks a man who's behind the punching bag she's really aiming for. This time, Margot sports a t-shirt featuring Dr. Seuss's The Lorax. The Bank of Evil has an interesting historic backstory. There's a shot of the Bank of Evil that says, formerly Lehman Brothers beneath it. This is a joke for the grown-ups in the audience that implies that the famously closed financial firm is back in action. Vector steals a pyramid at the beginning, but he doesn't do the best job of hiding it. After he steals the pyramid, it can later be spotted in humorously conspicuous disguise. Bob wears one important crown in this movie. During his coronation, Bob wears the British royal crown, and it's clear that one of the minions swiped it. Did you catch the paintings on Gru's wall? The artwork Gru has in his house proves that he's actually a pretty good thief. He's got the Mona Lisa and Van Gogh's Starry Night. There is one particularly unlucky kid in the Despicable Me universe. In this movie, Gru famously pops this child's balloon. The same child appears in Despicable Me 2, and his toy explodes. When Gru reads a story to the girls, it's actually a real book called Sleepy Kittens. Did you catch all 100 plus Easter eggs in the other Despicable Me movies? Let us know in the comments. And make sure you like and subscribe to The Things Animated for the lowdown on all your animated favorites.